The WonderWorks Family Movie is made possible by a grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting with additional funding provided by viewers like you and the National Endowment for the Arts. Fixing to roast some chicory. Expect I'll be roasting it all night tonight and all day tomorrow. But why you gonna do that, Great Grandma? Because no telling what fool thought took hope to your daddy's mind. Make him leave these hills and go live in some craving house. Roasting chicory is the best way to ward off calamity. <gasps> Watch out, boy. Uh, what's wrong? This here's a sign. Beware of omens that come in threes, and watch out for triangles. But why, Great Grandma? Never you mind. Just do like I tells you. Let's we go on outside. Folks, this way. I don't know why y'all got to go all the way to Ohio for anyway. There are plenty of colleges around here. Because they needed a good history professor, Grandma, and they happen to think I fit the bill. You tell you all bought quite a house out there. Mm-mm. We didn't buy it. We just rented it. Foundation owns it, and since Walter's working for them, well, we figured we might as well stay there. It's very historic. Meaning it's very old. No, it's very interesting. <laughs> See, it was built by an abolitionist, you all right? <laughs> Who used it to help slaves escape along the Underground Railroad. <laughs> now watch that step. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great-grandmama, come and paint your fancy spoon like I always do. Oh, now, you think you're the only little boy who knows how to paint my fence? I'm the only one who ever has. Uh oh Spring is... is a long road to hoe, son. Huh? Will you sing me at all, son? You always sing to me when I was sad. In your rags, rags, in your rags, any bones, any bottles today. There's a big black rag picker coming your way. In your
great grandmama write as soon as we get settled in good. And I'm going to read that letter too. As soon as I get to my eye doctor, get my spectacles fixed. Y'all go along now. And you take care of your baby brother, too. And y'all listen good to that baby. He'll let you know if anything is wrong. about that man, Dines Drill, the one who built that old house we're gonna live in. He was a Dutch immigrant, a very wealthy man who settled in Ohio. Papa, is it true that Dines Drill used to give escaped slaves money to go back into slavery? That's right, Thomas. But why? Because after they were caught and went back, they passed the hidden money on to other slaves who would attempt to escape. But why would slaves need money? Well, even a fleeing slave needs maneuvering money. Maneuvering money. I like that. Yeah. They needed money for food and shelter. The best way to get it was to buy it from free black people. And Dyes Drill used to hide slaves in his house? Hmm. Until it was safe for them to move on to the next location. What finally happened to Dyes Drill? He was murdered. Along with some slaves he was trying to help. Sorry, but... We're getting there, baby. What should we match up, baby? It feels funny. My baby. What you talking about? Hey, look! Son, I guess he was standing there all the time. Maybe he knows how to get to the house. I asked him not to. But, Mama, he got a gun. Oh, Thomas, he was just out hunting. You've seen that hunt before. I ain't seen no man like him before, Mama. Excuse me, sir? Yes, I I'm looking for a house. There ain't houses around here, mister. Which one you want? Well, I'm looking for the house of Dyes Dreer. What you want with that house? Ain't nobody living there for as long as anyone can remember. Well, some do now. We're moving in. We leased it. That's so. You take that road over yonder there. You take the straight there. Thank you. Not that it'll matter much. You won't be there long. What is that supposed to mean? Andy, you better turn around now while you still got the chance.
Our home. Our new home. It looks like the house is watching us. Hall, Thomas. But where is it? Walter? Walter, come here. Our furniture. Now, who could have done all this? Pluto. Who? Pluto. He's a caretaker for this place. Has been for years. Um... Papa, Pluto's another name for the devil, right? Right. Well, whoever this Mr. Pluto is, it sure was nice of him to do all this. Look at my old work table. It's from the kitchen back home. He smoothed it over with linseed oil and sanded it. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, that old Pluto's a pretty old guy. When I met him, he looked like he had a bad leg. This must have been quite a chore for him. He could have hurt himself. Well, I'm gonna fix him the most delicious meal you can think of as a way of thanks. Uh, Papa, you notice know something funny about the way this furniture is set up? What? Well, that old Pluto, whoever he is, has arranged all the furniture so that it's pointing in one direction. Right at that bay window. You see, Papa, it's a sign of warning. He wants us to get out. It's true, I'm telling you. You two are whispering about the chores I have divided up for you. Mm. But the Thomas, what's the matter? Well, who does this Mr. Pluto think he is working out the cuts on Mama's table? He's sure taking a lot on himself. He's got no business messing with our stuff. I thought better of you, Thomas. The man did us a favor by putting our house in order. No one asked him to, and you don't speak ill of kindness. Cranky people means everybody's <laughs> tired. Mm. Let's go on upstairs and get ready for bed. Hmm? Yeah. Ooh. You see the look on Papa's face when I said that? He didn't like this any more than I did. I know he didn't. Let's go. Walter, where are the pillows? I think I saw them in the living room. I got them. Now, who left the window open here for the rain to come in? Thomas, your PJs are in that brown suitcase. You know which one I mean? Walter, you put the brown suitcase in the boys' room? Can't get over this old Pluto. He really stopped this refrigerator. 
And look at this kitchen. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Mama, come in. Can I go on out now? Oh, Kai. Don't stray far. Thanks, Mom. McKenna, what's wrong with you? I don't like it. Come on, it's just a door look. What are you staring at? Behind and get swept, not mine. Whoa, Pesty, whoa. tell that horse to hold it. You want to walk this old Pluto's horse down in this hole here, or you want to walk him through the door of this house? Ooh, we, Pesty. Anybody go fooling around down there might get themselves lost in Dyer's Drear's grave, never to be found again. Shoot, ain't true at all. Now, how you know that? Because I know that's how. Hey, you going down there? Maybe. Well, if you do, Look out for the ghost that dies drear. Ain't no need to worry, though. Mr. Pluto is his earthly friend. And if the ghost mess with you, you call Mr. Pluto. If Mr. Pluto takes a liking to you, he'll save you. If he don't, well, too bad for you. Mr. Pluto may scare you, but he don't scare me. You could cross him, and that's it. You could be walking down the street, and the next thing you know, both your arms fall right off. And then you'll say, ah, my arms. And that's when you know the old demon Pluto done got you. Girl, you better go ahead on telling them stories. So, Daddy showing us believes him. I heard him call Mr. Pluto a demon plenty of times. Daddy's just talking, that's all. Wanna bet? Listen, don't nobody mess around this property unless Mr. Pluto wants him to. And if he don't like you, he'll come right up out of the ground like a devil and grab you. So you just go on and climb down in that hole and see if what I say ain't true. Who are you? Y'all from around here? Well, how you been and how you feeling? We the Dow children. I'm the youngest son, Mac. And I'm Pesty. I live with him, too. Yeah, Pesty's a name I give her, because she likes to bother me so. Like a pest. Anyway, my daddy calls her Sarah, and my mama calls her Suki. And that old Mr. Pluto calls her Little Miss B. And I guess you can make up a name, too. It won't matter to me, because I'm always going to know who I am. You live with him, but you ain't a sister? All he got is brothers. I was left in their doorstep in a new tin tub when he was just three and sleep in bed. His mama bought me in the house, and I've been living there ever since. Adopted. Hey, what you doing on Mr. Pluto's porch? He'll snatch you bald-headed if he finds you. <laughs> What's worse, he'll sick pesty on you, and then you'll really be in a mess. <laughs> well, first off, Mr. Pluto just works here, because this is my father's house. And second off, y'all ain't got no business on private property. <laughs> y'all better go head on. Nobody wants to be bothered with you. You really fixing to go down in that hole? Well, part of the Underground Railroad must be down there, and I aim to find it. Underground Railroad? Boy, ain't no railroad tracks down there. <laughs> well, if you get scared, just holler. I'm Mr. Pluto's helper around here. Come on, girl. I know Mama must got breakfast ready by now. Hey, what's your name? Oh, Thomas Small. Hey, Thomas Small, the new boy. How you like my new red night clothes? Ain't they pretty? I like red. You know, Pluto said red was the best color. It's the color of fire. Pluto keeps fire, like the devil. Well, 
Places for the runaway slaves to sit. They must have been so scared. They're alone. How could they see down here? How could they stand it? Must be around here somewhere. I know what I'll do. I'll just crawl right along this path here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. This is leading on up now. I'll just crawl right on out of this place. That's what I'll do. What's that noise? What's that sound? Somebody's after me. Nothing's gonna come after you, and nothing's gonna uh, kill you. But Mama, you know, it's just one of those old hidden tunnels. But now, where did? How did you get in there? What happened? Uh -huh. Well, son, I see you found yourself a secret passage, huh? You know, I didn't expect you to find that front door button so soon. You mean you knew? Well, you see, if any unexpected guest came to the house. The slaves could hide in this tunnel. You should have told me y'all knew about the tunnel. That's right, Walter. You should have. Thomas, almost every room in this house has some secret this or hidden that. Uh, I heard something in there, Mama. It kept coming at me. And it, Mama, it wasn't human. It wasn't alive. Walter, maybe you better take a look. Okay. Oh, no, 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 you stay here, Thomas. I'll be right back. But, Papa... Mama. I'll be all right. I just want to go see what it was down there that really frightened you. But, Papa... That's all. But, Papa... Did you find anything? 
You know, I'm going to take this whole thing apart tonight. Just seal that tunnel up once and for all. And fix that other entrance by the stairs, too. Uh, there were some kids, too. Kids? Where? In the tunnel? No, Mama, not in the tunnels. Out by the side of the house. And their names were Mac and Pesty, who was Mac's sister, but not his sister. You see, it's like... Uh, no, uh, you can tell me all about it while you and Kenneth clean up all the mud off this floor. Just what is going on around here? So, Papa, how did the slaves want to find Diadria's house? Well, they had a code, Thomas. A uh, Papa? Yes. You ever think that maybe that house is haunted? <laughs> no, Thomas, there's no such thing as a haunting. Everything has a logical explanation. But you said that that foundation report said that three slaves hit out with Dyes Dreer, mm -hmm. and two were killed by bounty hunters, and then Dyes Dreer himself got killed right in the house. But what happened to the third slave? No one knows, Thomas. What did Pessy mean when she said old Pluto would jump out of the ground and grab you if you made him mad? What's all that, Papa? Thomas, you're so full of questions, I don't know which one to answer first. Listen, Thomas. Your mother and I love you very, very much. And there's no way we let any harm come to one single hair on your inquisitive head. Okay? Okay. All right, come on, let's go. Let's get in the town. Uh, can I just stay here a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I guess it'll be all right. You just stay out of trouble, okay? Okay. And it gets dark real quick, okay? Papa, there was someone chasing me. Yeah. No, you stop it! Ah, ah, yeah! Yeah! Ah. yeah. Ah. <laughs> 
Speak to me. Speak to me. What is it? No! It's a small. Mr. Pluto. Oh, I'm sorry. I misread your boy. Strangers always poking about. Up to no good. I thought your boy was one. I gave chase. I want to thank you for taking care of things. Fixing the furniture and the rooms like you did. Saved me a whole lot of time and energy. Yes. Well, it, it must have been very difficult for you. Oh, I did just fine, ma'am. Uh, the van had brought your furniture at the start of the week. I just took my time. I hope everything's all right. Yes, no, but couldn't be better. Thank you. Uh, how are those horses of yours? Uh, the black and the bay? Uh, they fine. Uh, I'm working on their shoes. Uh, well, the bay's all right. I had to hobble the black. It got the chill and wouldn't stand still. Tried to run all night to get away from it. I had to hobble it, tie its feet. Keep it from busting its heart wide open. That's all right. Isn't it, Mr. Pluto? I mean, the black horse suffering from simple fever like that. Yeah, well... Uh, uh, to Thomas, here tells my wife about meeting two children. One of them, a girl named Pesty, who was riding a black horse. Now, since she said she was your helper, I got the impression the horse belonged to you. And that horse was in good health. Pesty. She can do more with a wild animal than any child her age ought to be able to do with anything. Are you telling me that a young girl like that could unhobble a horse, a full-grown horse suffering from simple fever? No. I mean to say, Pesty can ride that black any time. Any time at all, so long as it's day. Or when it's night, the horse gets the fever of nervous shock from haunted things that no living creature should ever have the unhappiness to set eyes on. Ghost, Papa, you talking about ghosts. What you're saying makes no sense at all. Sense? <laughs> the hoot owl screeching, westward flies, gauge the sun, and look to dies, and run. I couldn't even hear his footsteps. It's like he disappeared, poof, just like that. Thomas, you know that's impossible. I've taught you much better than that. Well, it seems nice enough, but he's so strange. A little too strange. Black horse with simple fever. <laughs> no such thing. Well, I guess he didn't realize we come from the country, too. Must have thought we were city folk. Why don't you go upstairs and get ready for bed, huh? Uh, Papa, how come he kept his gloves on? I guess he must have burned his hand or something. What are you doing? Walter, this door isn't going to get fixed by itself. Well, I can do that. Honey, you are a fine history professor. But when it comes to fixing things... <laughs> <laughs> I guess I better take a look around outside. And take one of the boys' baseball bats with you. Now, she <laughs> Sheila, really? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Hmm. <laughs> baseball bat. Didn't see him lifting this. Oh. Thomas! I'm sorry, Papa. I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> he didn't scare me. He, well, he just sort of caught me off guard. Who are you talking about anyway? 
or that man Pluto back when you met him. Oh, didn't you say he had a bad leg? Yes. Well, his leg couldn't have got perfect that quick, could it? Maybe it did. I don't know. Uh, could have been his arthritis. Well, maybe it just got better or something. Uh, who knows? I don't know. But, Papa. Yes, Thomas. Why do you want to stay around here by himself? I mean, wouldn't he get sad or lonely? That old man is history, Thomas. He's as tired to this place as the slaves were in Dias time. <laughs> he chooses to stay here. Caught between the past and the present. But why, Papa? Why? I'm going downstairs to the parlor. That way, if anyone tries to sneak around the house, I'll see them. And then I'll run upstairs and warn the family, okay? Okay?
Morning. Say, what's those? Oh, this child's English is so bad. What are those? Your triangle, son. But what's it all mean? I don't know. Here, here let me try something. See? It's a cross. If that's the way they go. But why? Triangles, threes. Great grandma said for us to watch out for triangles. Thomas, please. We don't have time for your great grandmother's superstitions. Do you think there's a fourth triangle somewhere? How'd they show up? Someone stuck them in the door frames of our bedroom. What? Then that means... Someone slipped into this house last night while we were asleep. But all the doors were locked. Yeah, we know. Oh, Pluto, second warning. Thomas. Papa, don't you see? First was the way he fixed the furniture downstairs in the parlor. Boy. You letting your imagination get the best of you. Mama, mama, mama! What on earth? There was a face! A face! What are you talking about? There was a face! A face! Honey, is this where you saw the face? Look, sweetheart. See? It's only a stain in the glass. See? No, Mama! Thomas, that's the school you're going to in the fall. It's pretty good. Where's the public library? Over there, on the right, no, no left. Thomas? That looks like an interesting bookstore. Everything's so flat here. I'm going to miss the mountains. I know, Thomas. I know. Where did he put his glove? Now, I thought, sure, he had burnt his hand. Those clothes. A bonnet. Where'd she find that? Morning, folks. Morning, Mr. Pluto. Nice to see you all out this fine Sunday. Nice to be here so you could see us, Mr. Pluto. That's so. I hope you all slept well last night. Yep. Slept just fine. Hi, Thomas Small, the new boy. How do you like my new dress? It's nice. Well, where'd you get it? Oh, I got it. Ah, hecta! Now, that has to be about the most unusual sight I've seen in a long time. Like something straight out of the times of Dodge himself. Say what, Papa? Uh, nothing, nothing. Come on, let's go. Come on.
Was that man in the road, Papa? Shh, Thomas. Their name's Darrow. Preacher told me all about him. Are they Max people? Looks that way, Thomas. Why were they staring at us so hard? That's a lot of them, huh? Yes, Daddy. They're nice folks, too. I didn't ask you that. Well, what you think, Daddy? See, they're real friendly with that old fool, Pluto. They probably ain't with him. That's how they got that house. So what we gonna do? Never you mind. I'm gonna handle that end of it myself. And you gonna help me. What you found out from Pesty about old Pluto? Oh, Daddy, she won't tell me a thing. She never has. She's so closed-mouthed about it all. Well, you keep your eyes on her, yeah? Daddy, I, I don't like the spying on my own sister. Those people down there, they seem nice enough. They even got a boy, my... Why don't you do like I tell you? Run off at the mouth. And as for that family there, I'm gonna make them sorry they ever set foot in the house of Dysbeer. Papa? Shh! Don't wake everyone! What are you doing now? Can I trust you with something? I don't want your mama to have to worry. Oh, you can trust me. All these things, everything that's been happening probably doesn't mean much, but just in case it does, I thought I'd better keep watch tonight. Oh, I'll keep watch with you. I can help. I know you can, Thomas, but I'll do it tonight. Okay? And you're going back to bed. Don't beat us, your old house. Not you or that old man. I won't let you. Thomas, you're probably dreaming. 
I wasn't even asleep. It ran out the door. It, it's out there someplace. Thomas, there is nothing out there. Now, come on. It's almost morning. Get some sleep. The door was unlocked, wasn't it? When you went out there? Well? Thomas, come on. Time to go to bed. Are you sure you're okay? Positive. This looks like your old school. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the main building. And my office, right, right up there. So, Thomas, why don't you come on along and go upstairs with me and see my office? I don't care. Oh, uh, Sheila, how about you and the Kenner? No. <laughs> you two go on. Kenneth and I will go into town. If I'm going to open up a shop here, I better look around. Okay. Oh, and I'll uh, look for those keys. Someone to fix the locks. Good. That's strange. This lock was working perfectly when I was up here yesterday. Maybe somebody was messing with it. Oh, there goes that overactive imagination of yours again. Meaning last night. Meaning everything that has been going on since we got here. Funny noises, demons, demons at night triangles. All of the things that have been happening to you have a logical explanation. <laughs> See, no problem. This place is pretty cool in the summer. But come winter, I expect I'll freeze. You mean there's no heat? Not much. Shoot, these northern colleges are something. No heat. What you have to understand, Thomas, is that this building is history. It's much the same as it was 100 years ago. Nothing much changes in places like these. Oh, Papa, sometimes I wish history would just die. How come you always have to have history clutter up everything? How is it you always know to go someplace where you don't ever have to change? What is it? Thomas, what have I done to make you so mad? I hate this place. It doesn't want me, and I don't care anything for it. Thomas, listen to me. I know things have not been easy for you, but you are going to have to hold on to yourself. There are some good people here, and we'll find them. Just give the place a chance. Hmm? Yeah, but will it give me a chance? They got in here, too. He said there's a man named Carr who owns a junkyard out here on Highway 68. He's a kind of a handyman, and he might be able to help us out with that old kitchen door lock. If they come this time, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for them.
I'm sure he said this place was open. Well, I guess he was wrong. Did you hear that? What? It sounds like a radio, Papa. I can hear it real faint. Wait, let me go with you. Me too. If you two don't sit back down, you better. You mind putting that thing down? You mind stating your business? The druggist in town told us you fix old locks. Yeah, I do locks, but I can't do nothing till tomorrow. It'll have to do then, I guess. Who are you? Whereabouts do you come from so I know where to come? The name's Small. We live out at the old Dyer's Drear place. So you're the folks moved into that place. Nice to meet you. My name's Carr. Edgar Carr. Walter Small. Been years since anybody lived up that way, you know. I mean, except for old Pluto. Yeah, well, so I've heard. Real fertile land up there. Good for farming. I should know. My dad's farm is next to the same stream that runs on your place. Hmm. Is that a fact? Say, young fella, you like berries? Sure. In that case, come on out to my father's place any time and pick all you want. We get plenty of them. Then, of course, there's the Darrow spread nearby. The Darrows? Except for my dad's place, they own all the property that surrounds yours. Right mean bunch when they want to be. Keep bothering that old Pluto something awful. Well, Pluto never said anything to us about it. Always been bad blood between old Pluto and the Darrows. Goes back to the Darrows' granddaddy, River Swift, who died years ago. He and old Pluto used to be friends. But they had a falling out. Over what? I don't know. They keep so to themselves. They can stay out in that farm of theirs for six, seven months at a time without folks seeing them. Always digging up trees and putting them back. Trees? Well, that ain't all. When old River Swift Darrow was alive, he and his kin moved their whole house a few feet to one side and spent a week looking under it for something, then moved it back to where it was in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thanks for the information. You're welcome. Just watch yourself with them Darrows. They're a strange bunch. Some folks think they're evil incarnate. Well, the youngest boy, Mac, don't seem too much like them, though. Maybe they're changing. Anyway, just stay out of the way and mind your own business. Yeah, well, uh, I got the picture. I'll uh, see you tomorrow morning, then? Tomorrow morning. Bright and early. I guess you was right about the folks in this town after all, Papa. That Mr. Carr is one of the best things that happened to us since we got here. No, I don't believe it. Mm. Finally. Chance to relax. You know, it's the first real chance we've had mm -hmm. <laughs> since we got here. <laughs> Ooh. So, did you, uh, you find that shop? Oh, I found one. <laughs> I think it's going to be perfect. Oh. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> 
I want you and the boys to stay in a hotel tonight. They mean for us to run. That's why they did this. But we won't. This is our hope. We're not going anywhere. We could confront them and get this whole thing over with once and for all if we just knew who it was. Thomas, I want you to come with me. Sheila. Sheila, I want you to take Kenneth, go upstairs to bedroom and lock yourself in. Stay there till we get back. Come on.
We'll go around. I don't want to take a chance and walk across that platform like you did the other night. Come on, this way. I saw it. I saw it, right? Thomas, this is in mint condition. How did he do this? Thomas, look. Look. Hey, that's when he came up and grabbed me. Yeah. But where is he? Now, he couldn't have gone out the way we came in. He's got to be here somewhere. Well, he didn't go out that way, that's for sure. Ooh. Hey, maybe he went through here. Just horses. So I figured I'd hurry back here. Uh, I don't want you to be alone. Yeah, well, we'll wait for him. Because he has to come back sooner or later. Oh, but Mama and Kenneth are still back. Thomas, you're right. I'll kill myself if anything happens to Sheila and Kenneth. What the? My God. Look at this. Just look at this. Papa, what is all this? The treasure of Dyes Drear, Thomas. But it all looks so new. These chambers are so far on the ground that the temperature remains constant. There's no such thing as dust or erosion. It's as if time can stand still.
Mr. Pluto. What you said about the dust up there isn't always true, Mr. Small. Sometimes I gotta go up there and do a little polishing up, like this. Be careful. No need to worry, Mr. Small. This is my job. I've been doing this ever since I was six years old. May I? An accounting. The day by day sale of our people. They aren't Mr. Dreers. I don't know how he come by them, but they tell a tale or two. Is that about slavery, Papa? Yeah. It's a list of our people that were bought. out. I kind of figured you would sooner or later when you first came over to the house. All these years, no one. Then pestered my little old Miss B. I followed him here one day. He didn't know. I guess I must have been about five. He was scared I'd tell my stepfather, but I never did. He and my older brothers, they would have come here and cleaned Mr. Pluto out. I decided to keep this my little secret. Mr. Pluto's always been my friend. Had to trick you at first. Thought you'd be like the Daryls and try and steal all of this. You know, I, I don't understand how... Some nights, the Daryls like to pretend they're ghosts and scare old Pluto off the land. They don't know, do they, Miss B? Nope. But we shouldn't have fooled you, though. That wasn't a proper thing to do. We had no right, no business. Then again, maybe we had every right in the world. I knew it! I knew there had to be two of you! I knew it! You are the devil! You try to make yourself into two, you devil! We wear the mask that grins and lies. It hides our cheeks. And shades our eyes with torn and bleeding hearts. We smile. We wear the mask. You're not a devil. No. I'm Mayhew Skinner. My father's only son. But why? Why all of this? Because of what you see in here. Me and that River Swift, Darrow used to be real close. And when we was young, we hunted for this treasure in here together. Funny how folks can turn on you. Turn, Mr. Pluto? It wasn't long before I come to realize that this here treasure was more than just a collection of riches. It was a legacy. One that I felt I was bound to protect. A monument to our people. All the Daryls ever wanted was the money. They'd have sold all this and scattered it to the four winds. Do they know what a treasure is? No. Once old Daryl and I Split up, we searched for it separate. I found it. He didn't. But I never let on that I did. I never kept the Daryls from trying. Yeah. Slinking around like rats, that's what they've been doing. But how did you keep them off this land for so long? Thomas. I, I'm sorry. Don't ask so many questions. How did you? Well, I figured if they could act like the devil, then I'd act the devil. I snuck in and out of these tunnels, 
making it seem like I could appear and disappear. Had them fooled for years. Other folks, too. People got to calling me a demon. Can you imagine that? Here I was protecting our heritage, keeping alive the legend of the House of Dyes Drea. My own people calling me a demon. How's that for gratitude? But I had me a good time, though. That is, until I got sick a little while back. Why did you think we were your enemies? My father never trusted anybody near that old house. It got so bad that's all he ever thought about. That's why my mother and I left over east. She couldn't stand it. And now you're back. Yeah, thanks to Edgar Carr. The man in the junkyard. One of the few friends I had in this town when I was growing up. He called me when my father got sick three weeks ago. Oh, so he knows about this cavern, too? No. No one does. Carl, I knew that my father was trying to keep a secret from the Darrells. And if that was important, then he probably should keep it from you, too. So he thought we were like the Darrells, then? So did I. I arranged your furniture. Scaring innocent folks like that ain't no need, I tell you. Dyes Dreer lives. When he wants to be seen, he will be. No need pretending he is. He is. Why, Dyes Dreer taught the slaves in this very room how to read and how to escape. How to read the triangles. Put them in a tree like this. Whatever way the right angle points, that's the way to freedom. Did you know about these caverns, too? No. Not until about a week ago, when my father decided he was mortal like the rest of us and thought it time to tell me. Do you blame me, son? We were so poor, father. All those years. And all this wealth. It wasn't mine to take. It wasn't mine. Diasdry has been dead a hundred years. He had no family. You had one. And you threw it away while you crawled around here all those days and nights. May you, can't you see, son? This is our legacy. Our heritage. This isn't our heritage. It's the art collection of a rich 19th century eccentric. The only thing that's under here that's really our heritage are those slave registers. The rest is just earthly goods. And you traded it all for mother and me. And now mama's dead. And you're dying. And there's an empty spot where my love for you ought to be. I couldn't stop. Dystria was always calling. I had to do this. You and the memory of that dead abolitionist. It got so close you couldn't tell what was real and what was not. And that's why Mama had to take me and go. And we were better off for it. Then why did you come back? Come on, Pesties, get late. Uh, may you. Your father is not going to last much longer down here. I tried to get him to leave. But he won't. Well, he's got to. And you've got to convince him it's for his own good. Uh, Papa, does that mean you're going to tell the Foundation about all this? I mean, you're going to let him take it? May you. We could talk about the answer to his question. That is, if you will let me be a part of the de decision. Come on, Pesty, it's getting late. See you tomorrow, Mr. Trudeau. This is
still our secret, right? I kept this place a secret for seven years. And I'll keep it 70 if I have to. Good night. as I can. I'll be all right. I feel better now. Much better. Now that I know a man like Mr. Small is here. He understands. He understands what this place means. He's a keeper. Keeper of history. Like me. If you or Pluto didn't trash our kitchen, Mayhew, do you think the Darrows did it? They sure did. And the other stuff in the house, too. They were scared because they thought you'd get to the treasure first before they did. You being a history man and all. Was Mac in on it? No. He got slapped down because he wouldn't go along with nothing that would hurt Thomas or his family. They've been hitting him a lot lately. It was my daddy and my grown brothers, River Ross, Wilbur, and Russell. They have to be dealt with. So stupid. Acting like a bunch of vandals on Halloween. Yeah, well, I can get the police to put a stop to their games once and for all. You know, I mean, after all, they were trespassing on Foundation property. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. But first, I'm going to exact my own revenge. <laughs> I know just what to do. Remember I told you I worked back east? Mm -hmm. I'm an actor. You could have fooled me. And he did. <laughs> Let me see Pesty safely home. Then, Mr. Small, I'll swing around your place later on tonight and fill you in on what I want to do to the big, bad Darrow boys. What about me? I want to be in on it, too. I'm tired of them beating up on Matt. You are going to be in on it, too. Folks, you're going to use tools you never even knew you had. Cleopatra, lead on. Papa, what on earth was he talking about? I'm not sure, Thomas. But if I read Mayhew right, I wouldn't want to be in the Darrow's shoes for all the treasure stored in this cave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Papa, we better get back to the house. Mama and Kenneth are still locked in the bedroom. Thomas, you're all right. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. What we're about to do involves deception, danger, and the utmost timing in order to be successful. And when it works, we'll have no more trouble from the Darrows. Danger. But we're not breaking the law. Not a chance. But we are going to break some spirits. Here's a list of the stuff I want you to buy at the store in town. 
Now, it's absolutely imperative that Adaros get wind of the fact that my father is ill. He's about to enter the hospital. Really? Well, no, not really. But it's important that you and Pesty make the Daros believe that. Now, here's why. There it is, the Yellow Springs Theater. Just remain calm and they'll never catch on to anything. You uh, be Mr. Small? Hey, that's right. I don't believe I know your name. Yeah, that's right. Uh, getting ready to do some painting, huh? Yes, sir. The whole house. I hear tell you folks have some excitement over there at that house of yours. Oh. You mean old Pluto? Old Pluto. Yeah. Took real sick last night. Had to rush him in town to the hospital. How sick is he? Can't say. They don't allow no visitors. He's getting a thorough examination, though, and... Well, I expect he'll... he'll be back home tomorrow. That all? What else could there be? Oh, uh, uh, well, mm, we uh, got a lot of work around the house needs to be done. Uh, gentlemen, good day. What if the Darrells go to the hospital to check on our story? Mayhew called Ed Kakar, and he's taking care of the alibi. Get in the car. that note about Pesty running over here to find old Pluto. What's the truth, Daddy? Yeah, truth or not, I'm still gonna whip her butt good for running away from her chores. Daddy, this is the only chance we're gonna get to search that old man's place. I know that. What do you think I am, some kind of a fool? Then we're gonna go tonight. It's the only chance we got. Yeah, it'll be tonight. We're gonna find that treasure and get rid of that family if it's the last thing I do. It wasn't easy coming back here, Dad. It still is. I know, son. I know. I was angry at you for so long. I was trying to make things better for us. You've got to believe me. All I know, Dad, is that when we left, you never came to look for us. You never wrote. It was like you didn't care at all. Son, when your mother took you and left, I was even more determined to find the treasure, just to show her how wrong she was. If she knew the treasure was real, not some silly legend, make up for everything. Well, I finally found it. Took me 30 years. Now it's too late to do any of us any good. She's gone. lost you too.
No dead. You haven't lost me. I'm here. And those slave registers are a real treasure. They should be passed down from generation to generation so no one will ever forget. We can get Mr. Small a help. He'll know what to do. He'll know how to preserve Diestria's real legacy for all the world to see. Do you really think so, son? I think so, Dad. We'll talk to him together. I love you, Father. Come on, boy. You go with us. No, Pa. I ain't gonna do it. What? Pop, it ain't right what you're doing to them people down there and that old man. I, I ain't going. You go with us, I'll break your neck. And you just have to break it, sir. I ain't leaving this house. Now you get your coat and come on, right now! I ain't gonna do it. You tell your mother to put some skirts on you like pesty. That's about all you're good for nowadays, anyway. Ain't the torches burning on the cave. Cause he's gone, like they said, and he ain't here to light them fool. Quit your arguing. Let's get on in there before somebody comes.
Vete. Well, sooner or later they're going to figure it out. But for a minute there, we scared them half to death. <laughs> Serves them right. Them fool Dells will never live it down. <laughs> yeah, and the Mars will hear from the police, and they'll be put away for a long time. <laughs> well, Thomas, how do you feel now? Well, I was lying on that ground for so long, I began to think we were slaves. For real. I'm like to scare me to death. Tell you one thing, I don't want to be an actor not a day in my life. No sub rebuttal. Mr. Skinner, how long did you look for this place? Thirty years. Oh, shucks, they're gonna start talking about history in another minute. Come on, Thomas, let's go outside. You know how boring grown-ups can get. <laughs> Good idea. You see, Father's great-great-grandfather was the third slave in the legend. The one that escaped the bounty hunter. That's right. And he's the one who told the story of the treasure. He passed it along. Now, it's all going to be taken away. Tell me, did Dyes Dreher ever catalog all of this property here? No, ma'am. Well, you see, that would have to be done before any of this could be turned over to the Foundation. Yes. That's a big job. It could take as long as the rest of an old man's life. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> oh. So, Thomas Small, the new boy, you gonna stop being so snooty like you was when we first met you the other day? Tell you what, I won't be snooty if you stop calling me new boy, okay? Okay. Do you think we'll ever have as much excitement in our lives again? I don't know. Life is such a long time. But I do know I've had enough adventure to last me the rest of my life. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>
Brasil.